So this is love. Mm-hmm. So this is love. I, you know, I, I guess the topic of the video made me think of that song. Plus, I just used that song in an Instagram story not too long ago. Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookish Realm. Welcome back to a, another Bookish Realm discussion. I am wanting to do at least two of these a month, but you know, sometimes I have to wait until the inspiration comes and I'm thinking about something. I'm like, ooh, I really want to talk about this thing. This is something that might be interesting. So today's topic up on the chopping block is do YA books really need romance? <laughs> And so this is a really interesting kind of topic for me to look at. And the reason why this topic came to mind is I, if y'all did not know, I formerly was a teen librarian before the current position that I'm in at work. If you're new here and you didn't know, I'm a librarian. If you've been here, I say this all the time, so it's no surprise. Like y'all probably like, all right, Ashley, we get it. We know. We, baby girl, we know. You ain't got to tell us no more. I know, I know, I know, I know. So one of the things that I always found interesting in being a teen librarian is, you know, not only just keeping up with the new releases that are coming out that are geared towards teens, following publishing trends, and you know, I did do a video, which, you know, up here somewhere, I talk about the problem or the issue with YA and its target and who it's leaving out. And so this is kind of, sort of, maybe related. I can see how it could connect the dots between the two, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna do that today. I probably will end up doing that today because it doesn't make sense for me not to do that today. Get it together, woman, get it together. So back on topic. I am here to talk about the question of is romance necessary and why does why a need to have romance and the reason why this all came full circle for me is because I was thinking about my past experience of being a teen librarian and certain things that I would do and it popped into my head I remember having instances where there would be teens that would come in and say or there would be caregivers that would be like do you have any YA books that don't have romance. Now let's go ahead and say this right off the jump. They do exist. I'm not gonna sit up here and I'm not gonna lie to you and say that YA books without romance don't exist because that is a lie. They do exist. <laughs> they do exist. But in my humble opinion, remember this is just my opinion. It's just my opinion. Doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean I'm wrong, it's just my opinion. I kind of wish there were more because, hear me out on this, Listen to my thought process behind it. I think that a lot of times, and it does tie into that previous video, I think YA is created sometimes in the sense that either one, we think that every teenager is interested in romance. Everybody wants to be in love. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to have a romantic relationship or we get caught up in the issues associated with publishing and YA right now where the romantic elements are really included for people who look like me. And I mean age wise, not black, just age. I don't know if I really look like my age. So I'm hoping I don't look as old as I am. I'm hoping, you know, there's some youth still somewhere in here. And for me, both of those assumptions are rather dangerous. I think it leaves out so many kids, teenagers, I say kids, but they're teenagers, who one, may not be interested in romance, two, may not want romantic relationships whatsoever. There are people who exists in this world that do not want romantic relationships. And so for me, I think that that assumption that every teenager is ready to always read about romantic relationships or wants to be bombarded with romantic relationships, regardless of what that relationship may look like, whether that is a cishet relationship, whether that is a queer relationship, they just may not want that and sometimes that assumption is made but I also think that is a larger indication of 
how obsessed we are as a society with love and romance and how social media views it, how reality TV has skewed our perceptions of romance and reality. Think about it this way. Whenever people are in relationships, myself included, we always post the good things, right? We never post the rough parts, the things that we have to work at, the things that are not really, you know, peaches and cream, butterflies and fairies and flowers. And so sometimes what people perceive as being a good relationship, a perfect relationship, oh, I want that, I need that. And it, it's just not healthy all the time. That doesn't mean that people can't share their relationships. So, you know, I don't ever work in definitives here, but I think it's a larger conversation about how society perceives relationships, romantic relationships, and how dependent we can become in romantic relationships. Everybody needs a partner. You're not fulfilled until you have a partner. You know, you can't function. You can't live without, be, live by yourself. You know, you can't live a fulfilling life if you're not married, if you're not with a partner. You, there is no, I'm just happy with me and my life and my friends and family and that's it. Like I'm satisfied with life. There's not a lot of that going on. So I think that some of that in terms of what's going on society's perceptions of love and relationships, it is very natural for it to bleed, I think, into literature. And so we see that a lot in YA, where we're assuming that these teenagers who are going through puberty, who or in a certain age demographic are going to be wanting to explore romantic relationships, their first love, their first partner, their first heartbreak. And that's not reality for every single kid. There are kids, teens, I keep calling them kids. I'm so sorry, y'all. There are teenagers out there that are not interested in that material. And when I was a librarian, I knew that books without romance did exist. YA books without romance did exist. But the selection is not as varied as it is for those who don't mind romance. And let's be honest, with YA, it doesn't necessarily have to be a contemporary rom-com. I mean, we have fantasy and sci-fi where there is a romantic subplot. It seems like it is everywhere. And don't get me wrong, because your girl right here loves love, love a good romance. I enjoy reading romance no matter what age category or genre it is in, but I am also highly aware of those around me who don't feel the same way, who are not as into reading about romance being the main plot or the subplot, who are not interested in experiencing the ups and downs of relationship. They are content with just a story with characters without that extra added piece. And I think in YA, it is a little bit more difficult to find it. It does exist, but coming from a librarian perspective, recommending it and finding it in such a broad spectrum and a wide variety can be difficult. Now, does this mean that no romance should exist in YA? Absolutely not. We're not going to sit here and work in definitives. We're not going to think black and white here. I just wish sometimes that there was more of a balance. And a lot of times I feel like that's what we miss in publishing. And this can be covered in so many different topics and so many arenas in this community. Balance is a thing that is just missing. I think that YA as an age category in publishing is missing that balance. We don't have a equal footing of YA books with no romance being centered or a subplot compared to romance being the center or part of the subplot. And it bothers me because I think about the fact of those group of tweens, call them tweens, in between kids and teenagers, they already are struggling with YA as a whole. And I can't imagine being 12, 13 and wanting to read YA, already there's not a lot out there for you. And maybe not really being interested in romance and being interested in partnerships and falling in love. It's like I'm 12, I'm 13. I want to read something that is older, that fits my age category, but maybe not with that content just yet. They may not be ready or they may not want it. There is a such thing as people just not 
wanting romantic relationships. It is not them. That's not who they are. And I feel like a lot of times that is just forgotten. And I wish that there was more research done into these groups that are often left out of publishing that don't get as much I I'm just gonna use the word they don't get as much play when it comes to publishing but I'm also cognizant of the fact that YA or publishing as a whole not YA that publishing as a whole is a money-making business and so those books that have romantic subplots those books that have romance at the center are going to do well they're going to sell because because guess who's buying them People my age, <laughs> maybe slightly younger, slightly older, definitely my demographic that is really moving the market of young adult. And like I said, I have a whole discussion about that. I'm not going to deep dive into that discussion because I've already done it, but it does play a big role. And I just keep seeing young adult, which I, I read a lot of young adult. It is part of the nature of my job. I work with youth related stuff, whether that's board books, children's picture books, beginner readers, chapter books, you know, middle grade stuff, young adult stuff. I work with it all. So it is just within my, my position in life that I consume a lot of it. And it's not that it's bad stuff. There are some great young adult books out there. I just feel like the more that we go through YA becoming this defined age category as it continues to grow and get older, we just are forgetting who it was initially created for and what we need to be considering when we are putting these books out on the market and, um, and creating some sort of balance, creating the idea that these books are for teenagers, 12, 13, up until 18, not someone who is my age or someone who is in college or is, you know, a little bit older than me, not saying that we can't read it. That's not what I'm saying because you can enjoy whatever books you want to enjoy. Hell, I read picture books for fun, but I think that, and not because I have a child, I just genuinely enjoy picture books. I just think that I struggle with the fact that we are steering away from the reality of these, these teenagers, <laughs> like their lived experience and their reality. I think sometimes we kind of stray away from that and we're so hyper fixated on us as adults that we're not even thinking sometimes of the fact that like, hey, you know, not every 12 and 13 year old that I knew when I was 12 and 13 was really interested in being partnered up with someone. That wasn't always a thing. Not even 14, 15. There are stuff, there's Reddit. <laughs> this, is, this is how I know like it's a reality and I wish someone would just survey these teens and just ask them sometimes instead of just making assumptions that someone would just ask. Because there are Reddit posts because I went and I looked and there are more recent ones, but I remember looking too, like back in the day and looking more recently, there are teenagers y'all who go on Reddit, who say like, you know, I'm, I'm 14, I'm 15, like I'm not into romance, like what can I read? What's out there for me? And it breaks my heart because it's, it's amazing that an age category that was designed for them is not meeting their needs, but that is the way of publishing. I, I'm just, I'm coming to terms with publishing has to constantly involve and it, it really needs to return back to who this was created for. But keeping in mind that I live in a capitalistic society in which publishing is, is very much so centered on making money. <sighs> I don't know if it ever will. And like I said, this, this is not black and white. There are no easy answers to this and there are no definitive answers to this, I think, because it's not saying that it doesn't exist because it's out there. You can find lots of lists on the internet with these books, but it's the fact that it's not as many that are out there. It's not as many that are accessible to youth as they should be. Whereas it, every other young adult book that you pick up if you like romance you're set if you like romance and you like sci-fi you're set you like romance you like fantasy you're set dystopian romance you're set contemporary romance you're set <laughs> like it, 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 
classic retelling with romance and you're set. So it's just, it's so much out there for one group and I don't even know if the target of those teens that would like romance, if even they're really truly the audience that's being thought about, to be honest with you. I think that some of it can be healthy. I think it's great that there are YA books out there that do illustrate first love, first heartbreak in very healthy ways. Books that are very sex positive, books that are defining relationships where sex is not the center of the relationship or sex is not being had. I think that that is great and it is needed. All of that stuff is needed. I just think that this is needed just as much and we just don't get it as much. So I, I, I really, y'all, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what exactly is going on with YA. I, I don't find as many issues and there are issues when it comes to like children's books and middle grade and picture books and board books and all that all that other stuff there are issues there i would be a liar if i said oh yeah they don't have any issues they have issues too but i think that because of the market behind young adult i see so much more than i do with the other age categories i it just is it seems like there's just so much because it doesn't know what it wants to be anymore and it's lost that essence of what it used to be so that's why I'm just like, I don't even have the answers on how something like this can be fixed. I don't know what publishing will ever do to rectify the, the, the romance, the, it not really being written for the appropriate age category. We're creating young adult books now that are aging up with the audience that is putting money into the market, which does it make sense because it's not it's never been for that group and that's why i keep saying that part of me wonders if even the 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 putting of romance into books if that's completely because we are trying to illustrate healthy relationships or illustrate experiences like first love first heartbreak whether we're trying to be sex positive if that's if the motives behind that are always because it's supposed to be for a teen audience or if it's because we are creating levels of being able to reminisce or creating levels of nostalgia for people my age it's just so confusing at this point i would love someone to do a study on something like this somebody to take a survey i don't know i just i i'm hoping and i'm praying and my fingers and my toes cross that I just hope that kids are not missing out. I hope that kids are not are not losing out on things that they need because certain things or certain groups are being catered to. I know this probably was all over the place. It just it was on my mind and I was just thinking about it, I was thinking about it, I was thinking about it, I was thinking about it and I was like, I really kind of want to talk about this. So I guess I have a couple questions for y'all. Do you feel like romance is kind of an overarching theme in a lot of YA? Do you think that it's something that needs to be fixed? Are you okay with it? And if you're okay with it and you think it's fine, that's that's fine. This is like I always say, this is just my thoughts and my opinions. Doesn't mean that I'm right. Doesn't mean that I'm wrong. I'm just sharing my thoughts. A lot of times when I do these discussions, believe it or not, it's very much so stream of conscious. I have my thoughts. I get on camera and I just talk. And that's the fact that it comes out somewhat cohesive shocks me every time very much so shocks me every time because this is just I wish it was more like I should start doing live streams again but my life is just so chaotic right now where it could be more of an open dialogue open conversation maybe I will go back to that eventually at some point but right now standing video is just kind of how we're working this but yeah those two questions and then do you want to share any recommendations with anyone about books that don't have romance as the center or the subplot or maybe low romance and I don't know y'all I, I don't know I I'm I'm just so concerned for this age group once again I just kept thinking I was like yeah even the romance like I'm concerned like 12 13 and 14 and even some 15 I'm like I, I, that crew that age group I'm just 
wrecking for that age group is very hard. I just want y'all to know that. It is very difficult to wreck for that age group. It is, it's not impossible, but it takes a lot of thinking and collaboration and wrecking quality things for that age group nowadays in YA. I can wreck all day if they're still reading middle grade. <laughs> but a lot of times they don't want to go to the children's section anymore and pick out books. They want to be in the teen section because they're teenagers at that point. And so it, it, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes. But as always, share your thoughts, your comments, your opinions down in the description box below. If you're interested in supporting the channel or if you're interested in following me on social media, all those things will be down in the description box below. If you're looking to find more content from me, make sure you click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notification. And as always, I will be back with another video soon, y'all. Always back with a video. Guess who's back, back, back. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Bye.